How have we gotten to the place that we're at today and what can you do about it? I'm sure that your feed is flooded with complaining about RAM. Micron exiting the business with Crucial, this is going to have tremendous impact on prices. Also of some of the most popular DRAM kits out there. When you're looking at how we got here though and what you can do about it, you might feel like there's very little you can do. And I would actually challenge you. There's quite a bit you can do. And I'm gonna give you some actionable steps today that can, if at scale practiced, help make an impact. I'm gonna show you the one keyword that changed the course of history also, and the power of that keyword that created the behemoth that put us in this position today was chat GPT. And if you look at the trends, it is almost synonymous in the eyes and ears of most normies out there when they even think of the word AI. They are literally the same. And I've talked to several people who have actually misconstrued chat GPT and AI together to be basically the same. This is because there is a low information gap that exists between a lot of users and a lot of their understanding. So talk to people about AI, talk to people about local AI, talk to people about data sovereignty. I think it's definitely no stretch to say we're here today because of ChatGPT, the keyword being synonymous with AI. And in particular, it being the first entrant and that first mover priority just being so freaking large. Go out there on Google Trends, let's take a look here. If you check out Claude, if you check out all the others, they do not even begin to hold a candle. Now, this is not true on YouTube. So this is where a lot of people might have an opinion that's formed on YouTube that doesn't translate into the wider search of the you know, world universe out there. And that is because there's different demographics that are browsing on YouTube than is out there browsing the web, mainly boomers. So you definitely are gonna have a much larger group of people that are just browsing the web that are very seriously one of the largest consumer groups who do not actually participate and watch in YouTube very often. Their limited exposure to certain things like keywords like local AI and some of the alternatives that exist out there is probably greatly impacted based upon the fact that it is basically a chat GPT world out there if you're looking at Google web search. I've certainly seen this in my website's own analytics. It is insanely hard to make a penetration into the market that is super saturated with the chat GPT keyword. So there is a huge thing you can do right there. Raise awareness of those around you. Who am I talking about specifically? Your parents, your friends, and your coworkers, if you can push that button with your coworkers, are people that are great to talk to about local AI and being able to run local AI. Is there a bubble? If there is a bubble, it would be very fair to suggest that it is being fueled in no small part by open AI. If you look at the data center expansions that, that, that are happening and underway right now, these are based upon some really interesting, really great science, but is there commercial viability is a huge question. The bubble is coming because of the cloud, not because of local AI. As a matter of fact, do you want your calculator in the cloud or do you want the calculator in your pocket is a pretty good question that everybody should be asking themselves. In the end, will LLMs be the thing that gets us to AGI or whatever you would want to consider AGI? Very unlikely, but there probably will be advanced technologies and new math that has to be invented or discovered for us to actually get to a place where we consider to have ourselves some sort of a comprehensive, capable, multifaceted system that can exhibit really high levels of intelligence in large amounts of domain and exhibit initiative. We are very far from that place currently. I mean, we are still very far from that place currently. So we have a lot of innovation that's happening and most of that innovation is insanely expensive. And the DRAM bubble that has now been created by the AI bubble is possibly one of the things that could burst. And it definitely is impacting your prices right now. We already see a lot of different manufacturers out there putting out warning to their supply chain that they are not gonna be able to supply them until possibly sometime in February. Of course, the Micron exit from Crucial is huge here, and that is, I'm sure, causing a lot of consternation in the people that are working at Crucial right now. Now, they are gonna support the returns, and you know they're gonna give them the inventory so that they have RMA capabilities, but moving past February of 2026, right around the corner, I mean, things just got substantially worse, like substantially worse in the RAM markets as a result of this. 
So when you look at Micron with their excellent HBM product and its very high desirability, well, you get the scenario where we're at, where they're gonna optimize for their money that they're gonna spend and their return on that investment is gonna be highest by going with the big players and the big data centers, the big ASIC manufacturers out there also are also consuming tons of the same materials. I've given you two points so far, so here's the third. The third is to actually run local AI. Your own workloads do not require, in many instances, new builds. I say this, there's almost always a model that can run on what you have already existing, so you don't have to run out and buy brand new. A GPU can go a long way, and as you see the price of GPUs staying kind of the same right now, granted AMD said that there will be a price rise coming sometime in the nearish future. How much that price rise is, is forecast to be about 10%, but still it could eventually be more than that. We don't have firm numbers, and speculation on those kind of things is very hard to do. But definitely, there is a price increase coming for them. And for most of the manufacturers out there that are looking to acquire from the markets, they are screwed. You looking at Xbox, that's pretty screwed up what is going to happen there. Now, Sony definitely bought a bunch of DRAM in the cheap summertime, and so they've got capacity for their growth. And that makes a very compelling argument for people that are looking at either going with a PC or going with a console. Steam, the Steam machine, I really think this whole thing sounds like it shouldn't even exist at this point. I hate to say that. I really like Steam. I have been playing quite a bit of Battlefield 6. But I definitely have to say, I think there is a huge consideration point. Like, the Steam machine shouldn't exist at this point. They're going to have to, I mean, either that or maybe they just sell it without RAM and just, good luck going and finding RAM on your own. I don't know. That's something I definitely think will be interesting to see how it pans out. But I hope that there was gonna be a good product. And now everything I've seen, definitely the interview and everything, looks like it's gonna be pretty expensive. I'm not sure that's gonna be a great value for the end user. And so that makes it more important than ever to keep what you've got in good shape. So definitely do preventative maintenance on your stuff. This is a great time to consider making sure that you don't have a disaster because of the number one cause of things that will give you disasters on your PC power delivery. So if you don't have a UPS, you should definitely have a UPS. You should at a minimum have a good surge protector, but definitely this is one of the things that I noticed when I started putting surge protectors on everything, and literally they're on everything, the longevity of those devices increased a lot. So definitely make sure if you don't that you consider getting a UPS that you can put on your system and keep it a little bit safer. I've got links to some ideas about that in the description below. But definitely I think running local and keeping your local machine in good shape is what you should do at this point in time. And being an advocate for local is something that helps tremendously. And don't think that you can't be an advocate even if you just talk to your mom on the phone and she brings up ChatGPT definitely an opportunity to do a little bit of outreach and education there. So those are some of the thoughts that I have on what you can do today to help push back against OpenAI, Sam Altman, and the absolutely insane world of DRAM prices that have been created as a result of the mega buy of 40% of the world supply of DRAM. Rage. I mean, I'm pretty pissed. This definitely changes a lot of what you're gonna see also on YouTube. Most of the content creators out there that use affiliate stuff, they know right now, like system builders, gonna be few and far between. So they're also trying to figure out like, how can I go in a different direction? Unfortunately, that oftentimes means sponsors. And sponsors, well, I don't know. I'm not gonna say it's hand in hand with bad content, but usually I find most of the sponsored content to be like stuff I skip. It's just me. Let me know what you think below, but I try really hard not to do any sponsored stuff on this channel. And definitely that is supported by you if you are a channel member. So big hats off to all of our channel members. I really do appreciate everything that you do for the channel. And you can find a link down below that you can join as a member. Also, thanks for the shares, thanks for the likes, and thanks for the subscribes, everybody. And I will look forward to reading what your comments are on this. This is some unprecedented times as far as system building and as far as the availability of what almost feels like something that is part of a core constituent need for every human. Dram. Weird or accurate? I look forward to reading what you have to say down below.
Check out the videos here if you're looking for how to get up and running with your own local AI machine really quick with OpenWeb UI. And also check here if you're just looking for some general home lab stuff and you're interested in getting into systems.